The Volvo XC90 is more than just an SUV. It's the vehicle that saved the Swedish automaker from a near demise. Since its groundbreaking debut decades ago, the XC90 has evolved into a symbol of Volvo's future, often setting the tone for the brand's innovations. First launched in 2015, the second generation introduced revolutionary features, including a modular platform, cutting-edge semi-autonomous safety systems, an intuitive infotainment system, and an array of powertrains, such as the now-iconic plug-in hybrid. Fast forward nearly a decade, and the XE90 is still going strong. For the 2025 model year, technically labeled as the 2025.5 model, the mid-size luxury SUV has undergone a second facelift, striving to stay competitive against rivals like the Audi Q7, Mercedes-Benz GLE, and Acura MDX. Volvo invited us to Denmark for an exclusive test drive to see how these updates hold up in a fiercely competitive market. At its core, this is the same XC90 that impressed the world in 2015, built on Volvo's scalable product architecture, SBA. While it received a minor refresh in 2019, this latest update goes further with significant changes, particularly in technology and design. The interior now features a sleek 11.2-inch touchscreen running a Google-based infotainment system, offering native app downloads and over-the-air updates. Mechanically, the changes are subtle but meaningful. Major powertrain enhancements were introduced back in 2021, so this update focuses on refining the driving experience. Volvo has improved the suspension with new frequency selective dampers, FSD, for models without air suspension and added enhanced soundproofing for a quieter, more refined cabin. The result? A refreshed XC90 that aims to stay at the forefront of luxury and innovation. The second-generation XC90 set the stage for Volvo's bold new design language, and it's still a winner. While the overall styling hasn't drastically changed, Volvo has made subtle refinements that elevate this latest iteration. Many of these tweaks are so nuanced you might not notice them unless the old and new XC90 are parked side by side. For instance, the taillights now have a darker tint, adding a touch of sophistication. From the front, however, the updates are striking. The redesigned grille, featuring a bold cross-diagonal pattern, commands attention in person, while the updated headlights retain the signature Thor's hammer design. These elements establish the XC90 as a close sibling to the all-electric EX90, though I find the XC90's cleaner, non-pixelated daytime running lights, DRLs, even more refined and elegant than those on the EX90. Other enhancements, like the sculpted hood and new wheel designs, up to a stunning 22 inches, perfectly complete the look. In my opinion, this is the most visually appealing SUV in its class right now. Mechanically, the three available powertrains remain unchanged since the last update in 2021, when Volvo retired the twin-charged engine in the T8 plug-in hybrid, though it's still offered in the V6 variant. The real improvements lie in the chassis and suspension. Volvo has fine-tuned the suspension setup for a smoother ride and enhanced noise insulation for a quieter cabin. Additional sound deadening materials in the A and B pillars, along with optional laminated side windows, significantly reduce road and wind noise. While a faint whistle over the driver's side mirror persists, the plug-in hybrid's cabin remains impressively serene, even in pure electric mode at highway speeds. A smoother, more refined ride. The suspension system offers two configurations. The standard setup features double wishbones in the front, integral link suspension at the rear, and frequency selective damper, FSD, technology paired with a composite leaf spring. This unconventional choice raised eyebrows when the XC90 debuted, but it's proven itself by delivering a balanced and composed ride. The problem with our first drive was that the roads around Denmark and Sweden were as smooth as the greens of the Augusta National Golf Club, making it difficult to test whether the updated suspension made any difference. I purposefully sought out manhole covers and cat's eyes in the road, but aside from these slight bumps in isolation, all damped well with minimal secondary body movement, there was nothing to test the XC90's default suspension. But a noticeable improvement compared to prior iterations was a softer rear end, less prone to bucking over speed bumps when unladen. 
The air suspension is still the better of the two setups in this situation, soaking up primary and secondary vibrations without the motion sickness inducing floatiness that often accompanies air. It also provides better chassis control, displaying admirable composure through the rolling hillsides of rural Sweden, and then raising and lowering for easier ingress and egress and loading into the truck. The caveat is that it's only available on the top spec ultra trim, and even then, it's a $1,800 option. One pedal driving, a revelation for the plug-in hybrid. Volvo's 2.0 liter four cylinders have never been the best sounding, and that hasn't changed. The base B5 powertrain sounds labored under hard acceleration. So even with power in reserve, it's always asking you to back off a little. The T8 plug-in hybrid has the benefit of an e-motor on the rear axle, capable of getting the XC90 to highway speeds and beyond without using a drop of gas, minimizing the load on the internal combustion engine and sparing occupants from enduring the gravelly tones of the four pod under duress. There's plenty of punch here, but with no mechanical connection between the front and rear axles. The ICE drives the front axle and the E-motor drives the rear. Heavier throttle loads result in an undesirable jerk as the ICE springs to life in hybrid mode. It's as if the two powertrain elements don't talk to one another at the point of handover, like Olympic sprinters fumbling the baton exchange in the relay before finding their footing. If you can live with this odd behavior, the PHEV works well, with enough go in either hybrid or pure, electric-only, driving modes, but the 32-mile electric range has now fallen behind the segment's best. However, the saving grace is the XC90's one-pedal driving with the B transmission mode activated. You can enable a creep function through the touchscreen that never lets the XC90 come to a complete halt. But toggle this off, and you can drive the XC90 like an EV if you want, making the most of the regenerated braking. Speaking of braking, the T8 PHEV was curiously the better breaker of the two in terms of brake feel. Typically, automakers struggle to blend friction and regenerative braking, but where the base B5 powertrain's brake pedal felt wooden and lacked feedback, the T8 seemed talkative, smooth at any speed, and confidence-inspiring. A reversal of roles from what I'm used to. Fundamentally, the cabin of the XC90 is unchanged in that it still seats 7 by default. Optional second-row captain's chairs reduce this to 6. The third-row seats are still not advisable for adults or large teens, but they'll suffice in a pinch, while the first and second rows have more than enough space for adults to get comfortable. Resh materials feel light and spacious, but leather replacement is a letdown. Volvo doesn't do the heavy, dark colors that epitomize premium SUVs from German rivals, and a choice of warm woods and lighter textiles dominate the interior palette. 